all their models were hidden in their house at the back of the board, which is an impenetrable yeah. fortness. Fort fortness. Fortness. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Golems Gamers podcast. So today, as you can see by the title, uh, today we are doing a uh, doubles analysis podcast episode where um, we're going to be breaking down kind of the double scenarios, uh, what goes into winning at doubles, and then we'll take a look at kind of some winning lists from recent doubles events. Now today, we are joined by a very special guest, um, who is David Clubley, who joins us today, um, who I would say has recently turned into one of our newest super fans of of the podcast potentially cobbly uh any any comment on that one any podcast that's not any hurts mate is good for me <laughs> starting off with the schmalky <laughs> what the fuck is the schmalky <laughs> <laughs> love that from you cobbly getting you know stuck in Bobby. me <laughs> um so a couple of things before we get um underway so um first of all be sure to go and follow us on instagram uh <laughs> um i've been posting a lot of photos and things on there of the team uh and all that sort of thing so uh yeah links that is in the description um but before we get into kind of uh you know doubles and all that sort of thing um how has everyone been it's been a while since we have done a podcast it's been a good few weeks i think We've had a, I think we've had a three week hiatus, haven't we? From yes, the lot. So we previewed the GP. Uh, I think we need to shout out Sam Gratton for getting in the top eight and having a nervous picture on the stairs. That's uh, cool. along just with Sam Gratton, though. Ali and Ben, wasn't it? Yeah. See, if you're on the Instagram, uh, you've no. seen all Jay this content. And... Jay Sorry, and Jay and Ben. I think Ali was ninth, which is pretty tough, but <laughs> what a loser. No, <laughs> no, good night. Um, good fun. And then did you, Adam, or I think Vince went to an 80 recently. No, Vince and I are going to an 80 this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Going to terrorise the 80 meta for no reason. Yeah, so um, I, I'm going to go and take Necromancer, the actual <laughs> Necromancer, to a 500-point tournament. That's pretty so That's going to be right giggles. And, um, yeah, John Partridge, uh, Carl Bay, and Vince Wong. <laughs> Are all going for the big dub, taking it seriously. Fucking hell. <laughs> what a shark that, tank dude. for an 80. Eh? Like, Absolutely shark tank. Jesus Christ. I, like, I can think... I have it on record? Give it so 80. The only thing John Partridge can win. Ooh, <laughs> oh. and, and even yeah. then, I mean, John's a really good player, but I don't know if he's going to win it because there's a lot of, there's like 40 people going and a, a lot of them are going to take it really seriously. What's, what's, uh, what's Vince taking? We need GBHL 70s. Vinny's taking Last Alliance. Oh, uh, I thought he's taking it seriously. Points. <laughs> I thought he's taking it seriously. Uh, <laughs> yeah. wow. What's his he, list? At he, think, he thinks it's better than uh, Which Rohan. So uh, he, he's going for this. He thinks yeah, a lender classic is, opinion. Is, is that. <laughs> Rohan. Rohan. <laughs> That's tough from Vince. So I think his 500 list is um, a and Kirdan, something like that. No, that's not possible. possible. That's uh, not possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, he must be taking a captain. Glorf, actually, and then adding a Sildor at 700. Uh, here. I'd like um to just, as we're such a hobbying podcast, Sam, would you like to tell us about the hobby <laughs> side of the game that you've recently been, you know, creating? Um, well, I think I might leave this for a future painting uh, video. Cool. Painting. <laughs> <laughs> no, my painting has been pretty nervous, but you right, know. guys, but, but we can tempt the viewers by saying there there is some hobbying going on. The new oh, year, new army, the new year, new army stuff is well and truly on the way. Um, I am currently hobbying. Oh, it's um. Now that's all my all all my stuff as well. Now, right we will not comment on the origin. Of what is in these boxes, but um, there sure are the origin there, is Warhammer. There are models. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's, it, that's it. You get a little. You get a little look. Well, well it's got a games that, workshop mate. sticker yeah, on it. So I'm guessing the origin. <laughs> you order that, workshop. mate. Where could it have come from? <laughs> we get a. That's it. Mm. So, have yeah. you been doing any hobbying recently, Master Clubly? Always, mate. Always hobbying me. Well, yeah, I'm listening to any heroics right now. What's going on? 
yeah. <laughs> on a more impressive subject, okay. uh, Sam Grattan recently broke the Gollum's game of bowling record with a, a, yeah. a cheeky one six eight. Now, let us know in the comments Ooh. below, viewers, if you have ever beaten 168. What is your going, highest bowling score? You, yeah, what's your highest temping bowling score? Tag us on Instagram. Honestly, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I would rather have got that score than 100. Like, that bowling score, was, <laughs> that meant a lot to Ash and James and I. Like, that was that was big. That's We, that, are, we are not only big. competitive in SBG, but also in bowling. Bowling. So, bowling. Sam, Sam took a fat win on that one. That's uh, pretty typical. So you got more points in a frame of bowling than Elliot will get in the entire USL season. <laughs> <laughs> right, wrong, Clubby. Sting. Ooh. You are the best right. thing was the best thing was um, I accidentally skipped. So do you know uh, you've got like the the score on the uh, on the computer. I skipped next game, so we went and got a physical hard printed copy of Sam's <laughs> bowling game that he's got that he's got, and he took it home. Still in my glove box in my car because I forgot to take out. So what was the score? <laughs> one six eight. One six eight. Oh. And it's not anyway. impressed. I didn't sound doubles. very impressed, does it? Know, doubles, it? Doubles exist, doesn't it, guys? We should probably talk about doubles. I think. Doubles, clubbles. Doubles. Bowling doubles or doubles. Oh, no, no. Not bowling doubles. That would be bad. As long as you're on my team, mate, we'll be uh, smashing. Oh, yeah, to be fair. Adam's, Adam's a pretty mean bowler as well, isn't he? I heard. Clubbly's a professional uh, bowler. That's what I've heard. <laughs> Probably so keen he wears a glove. Mm. That is hard. And a helmet. I do have the bowling glove in the straw, actually. <laughs> Cheers. And you wear no, it for right. the rest of the pod. Oh. <laughs> that is incredibly nervous. That is hard. That is um, okay, so, Clubly, moving on. Did you want to give our keen-eyed listeners a sort of a background on yourself as, like, a T.O.? <laughs> Uh, there's the doubles event that you've ran recently. You ran one last year. And why, <laughs> what, he's a T.O.? No, you me said me when I'm a keen-eyed keen eyed listeners. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Viewers, yeah, listeners. That, that would have be a worrying point of us writing that down. We have you both. must, probably, you must get that a lot, you know, people just being so nervous in awe of your yeah, keen awesome. eyes. Before, That's clearly what it is, yeah. Um, <laughs> are you, are you going to be doing the scoring for this episode as you usually do? Nah. No, because oh, oh. then I'll be scoring myself, and that's bias, you know. Mm. Yeah, that's true. We could do it for you. Um, so yeah, just on kind of your events, uh, you know, you uh, you raise some money for charity and all that sort of thing. Your SBG career. Yeah. Oh God, we're here all night. All right. Um, um. Hello, I'm Dave Clubley. If you don't know me or haven't met me, I've um, been playing longer than these kids have probably been alive, which is sadly not even true. Um, <laughs> not even not true. Double negative mm. on that one. Um, yeah, um, um, a mediocre player and a pretty good TO. <laughs> Sum me up now, Adam. Does he have good terrain? <laughs> um, so at the doubles event, the terrain was really, really good. Yeah, really, really good. Okay, see, so Liverpool. Um, yeah. Let's ask Clubby, why do you run this doubles event? <laughs> Money, baby. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Is it nice to hear a TO say the truth? No, um, I do it so that other people run events so that then I can go to an event, you know. Yeah, sort of that's there. the community. <clears throat> story, right? Yeah, if you don't run them, then no one else will run. Them. But if you run one, someone else might be inspired to run an event, and then you've got somewhere to play. No. That yeah, does make yeah. sense. Yeah, advice to take forward, ladies and gentlemen. I like that. Yeah, wait uh, for the Golden Gamer tournament. I was thinking about running one this year, but I had. It isn't but I happen. won the points instead. It was, <laughs> it, it was, it was going to be a four game, um, a four game one day ninety at eight hundred points, which would be pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, Good, I, I like, I like the events that award stamina, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Clubly, why, uh, you know, do you run specifically uh, doubles events? Have you run a singles event? Before, I have yeah. I used to run a G Match hundred for quite a while. Oh, that's um, a war, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, doubles is a bit easier when you've got um tight space for tables. Um, so say you've only got enough terrain to do ten boards, so that you could do twenty normal players. So you could bring in forty players to see your amazing Adam Sirens improve 
approved drain mm -hmm. or you can bring a foy um and doubles i think is a good load of fun for everyone it's something different um gbit shell doesn't have too many doubles so it's a bit of a niche if you're trying to get your event out there in the gbit shell market gets you more people to go to your event just uh plenty of reasons really yeah makes sense yeah cool and i know that you do like a little charity sort of thing while you're there is that right do you want to explain about yeah that? Yeah, yeah. We just, uh, my lovely girlfriend, um, they baked some Swedish canel bula cakes. Um, Mr. Grattan can attest how good they are. I think he had four. Um, <laughs> yeah. Classic Sam. Over yeah, the two days, classic, they so. were fucking lovely. Yeah. yeah. They were Over two standing. days. Yeah. Over two days. <laughs> yeah. Um, buy a load of those cakes that say multi pack, do not sell separately and sell them separately. Um, but it's good <laughs> because all the money's going to charity and it's just these players have got something to eat and drink. And we're doing something good with our weekend, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, so before we kind of move on to talk about, uh, you know, doubles, we're going to start looking at the scenarios, obviously, because um, you guys all went to Clubley's event. Did you want to kind of give a brief recap of how things went? You know, like, uh, so not in I depth reckon, your games, just yeah, how you got I reckon, because I'm not entirely sure that everyone would have played doubles. So if we okay. get to go over the scenarios first, go first and then let's... and then you can see how me and James and Adam and Sam played together. Because the double scenarios, especially if you haven't played doubles before, are very different. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good and, idea. And it's actually good that all four of you are here because you all went to his event. So, so exactly. maybe maybe then Ash on that point, start with why you should play doubles. Uh okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I love doubles. So doubles, <laughs> um, basically allows you to play with your friends and also like experience the luck and swings and just the general banter of SVG with somebody else. Um, so for example, me and James, when we were playing at Clubley's event on the first day, James had horrendous <laughs> dice luck and we'll get into some of the games and how that occurred. But, you know, after an event when me and Sam and Adam are, you know, doing well day one and James is 0-3 and he comes up to us and goes, I've had really bad dice luck. You just kind of <laughs> brush it off and say, oh, that's because James is shit. But actually, when you experience it with him, <laughs> it's sort of doubles fun. You can go, yeah, I can see how you go 0-3 now, James. That, yeah. that it's it's nice being the person who would go 0-3 and, and having someone else who's not going to roll terribly to make you not lose. It's quite <laughs> <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> What about uh, the others? What do you think about uh, why you enjoy playing doubles? So for me, I actually, for me, SPG is a social game. And I think one of the things that happens when you end up sort of at those higher ends of a tournament is quite often the games almost seem like People predict what's going to happen. They don't necessarily say that, but everyone's kind of at the, the level where they can work out what's going to happen. And then there's a certain predictability about things. And yeah, I mean, it's fun, but it's almost like there's a pressure on, on someone to try and win. And if you don't win, often you see some sort of glum faces and things like that, because obviously at the top level, everyone really wants to win. Mm. In doubles, I think I could not ever look around the room and just see everyone laughing. And that's personally what I love about doubles. It is just so much fun. Even when like we got, spoiler alert, last game, Sam and I just uh, completely like lost in one turn. And you know what, after that, it was just like, ah, it's just doubles. It's just, it is just a laugh and that is, it's why I got into SPG. Hmm. I think it's also the roots. They also doubles has like everyone. Everyone has like their play style. Like some people prefer positional. Some people prefer the tricks and you know the things that can win mm -hmm. your game in one turn. And then say when your your doubles partner is the opposite to you, you kind of see the overlapping. Like mm. it's actually good when it comes to learning from seeing other people's what they would do in that situation because like when i i'd say i have a, a little bit of a different play style to adam so we would both like suggest different things and it's interesting to see you know how how people go about the situation that you're in 
Um, yeah. And just to add on to that, Sam, I think for me, the thing that I enjoy the most is when you have those discussions, it's happening there at the table in front of the other team. And you sort of maybe step to the side and have a quick little word with your opponent about, you know, an idea you have or a play that you want to make sort of, it's those kind of secret little, you know, conversations you might have. Yeah. You're trying to keep away from your opponents. I think that sort of interaction throughout the games, you know, trying to bluff and that sort of thing is, mm. is just quite fun. Um, mm. And I enjoy that bit the most. I think, yeah, definitely. I think that's really fun. It's basically, we get to do what we do on this podcast. But with your teammate yeah. live as you're playing, table, and you get yeah. to, you know. Um, also, one thing I'd say about doubles is it is actually a completely different game you're playing as well. So yeah. if you're used to playing singles, um, say you're getting a little bit, I don't know, uh, run down, or you've kind of been to lots of tournaments and you're getting stale with the game. Doubles is using the same mechanics, but for different scenarios, which we'll touch upon in a completely different format. So it can give you like a new, you know, just a new breath of fresh air into your, on the game and that into your game. Yeah. Uh, well, let's, let's start there then. So the first scenario is no escape. So um, for the audio listener, this is probably going to be a little bit hard to sort of explain, but I mean, if you're watching on YouTube, so you can see there's sort of the um, screenshot from the book of the board. So you basically have, in doubles, you have um, a primary force and a secondary force. So how it usually works is that if it's a 800 point event, one player will bring one force of 400 points and the second player will bring um, the, uh, a different 400 point force from the same army. So in this one here, for example, you would have team A deploy their primary force within six inches of the center of the board, um, but anywhere on the 24 inch sort of horizontal line um vertical line uh and then um team b would have their primary force deploy um six inches on the other side and then after both of those are down then um team a will have their secondary force come behind the opposite team um six inches from that board edge and then vice versa on the other side um so the victory points here are for leader wound and kill break unbroken which is three and five which is like to the death uh, it's a banner scenario for one and two VPs, and then you just get two VPs flat if you kill the um, leader of the secondary force. Um, so this one actually sees a little bit more play um, outside of doubles events. I know Harriet, Lord of the Imps, um, runs a sort of slightly edited version of this every year. So um, this one I've actually played a fair amount. Um, but any kind of thoughts on this one from experiences when... You played it before? It's a shame that this one's come up first uh, because this is... It's in order in the book, so... The most, <laughs> no, I know, but this is probably the most um, exciting game that me and James played. Uh, I guess we can talk about why, uh, but then leave the actual details to afterwards. Effectively, this one is really difficult to win if you deploy first because how the deployment works with coming on in sort of strips in the center of the board means the person who deploys first is at a massive disadvantage because mm. then team B can instantly counter where they've gone. I think a nice tweak to this one could just be if you deploy warbands. Yep. Um, I know that's not going to affect every army, you know, if you're the player taking the bears of one warband, but most lists are going to have two, three warbands in a half. And if you can see where they put in that warband at a time, um, because Ash, you're completely right. W once you see where your opponent goes, their whole army, and they have to go in the middle because they need they don't know if you're gonna go left or right, but mm. even when you go left and right, you're still so far away from them. Yeah. And it's all about let's say something. let's say you're playing like um you've got a matchup of say Azog Hunters and Bears. Like if you're the Azog <laughs> Hunters player, you're gonna want to keep your leader away from the bear. So if the bear deploys second, um, then obviously they're going to know where the Azox Hunter player has put their leader so they can jump on them. But if it's vice versa, the Azox Hunter player can just put the um, their leader as far away as possible from the bear, sort of on the deployment line there. So, um, yeah, it's really quite important. Yeah. I, mean, I other think, than that, though, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a rehashed deployment version of To the Death, really. It's, it's 
it's fine enough as scenarios go. Yeah, I think uh, alternatively, probably um, when we were playing this, people suggested that it's just six inches from the center of the board as opposed yeah. to six inches in a strip. Yeah, uh, because then that negates the initial bonus because the other person has to deploy in the middle. I think the advantage comes from deploying second and then really quickly joining up with your secondary deployment by going either side, whereas the team of them that goes first can't necessarily do that. Yeah. No. I think a theme we're going to see quite a lot is sort of um, where the primary and secondary force is split at the start of these scenarios. So um, sort of when you're building lists, you've got to think about whether your primary and secondary force can function on their own um, or are they forces that you're trying to get together as quickly as possible? So do you maybe want, uh, you know, a march in each force so that you can link up quickly? Obviously in this one here, you're basically trying to sandwich your opponent's primary force. So, you know, can you do that before your opponent's secondary force catches up? If you have two marches, maybe you can do that beforehand. Well, um, on on that, Elliot, I don't know if we're going to talk general doubles, tactics, etc. but... That's why we're here, Connie. So. That's, yeah. that's All the right, well, point. <laughs> it, I didn't know if there was a section, rather. You know, no, there, no, 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 no. It, it's when going to double storm, it's key to pick your army because if you pick a Ledger or a Legion, you're at a huge advantage because you get to know who your leader and who your primary force is. And that can't be understated, always knowing who's going to be in the middle and who's going to be on the outside. Oh, yes. So do you want to touch on that? Because I thought, um, was it are not we, or in yeah, some doubles events? We tweak it said. at our tournament, and a yeah. few others do. We we make the highest tier here at the leader, and if they're equal, you can pick as normal, um, which I think makes a lot more sense. Otherwise, with the way doubles army lists are written, you could take Aragorn in one player's half and Madra in the other, and Madra ends up being the leader, which yeah. makes no sense, does it? Um, I think that's probably an oversight, right? They just haven't I'm sure they intended for you it. You say oversight, I and mean, it's written very clearly in the army building section. <laughs> <laughs> and it's never been FAQ, so. Yeah. Um, it's just weird that Ledger Allegiance gets such a powerful buff. In it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's important to know. If you're going to doubles tournament, look at the rules back. If they haven't tweaked it, you just need to know that you can game the system so you know who's always going in the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you need... Doubles is obviously very, I don't think it's heavily skewed, but it's skewed to to where either both lists need to be functional on their own as one mm. army. They can hold up. They have March, they have a striker, they have a mounted hero, they have a banner so that when they need to fight on their own or maneuver somewhere like this, they can. Or you go for one portion of the army that can do that, can fight on their own. And then the other is based on movement speed yeah. so it can actually join up fast enough <clears> so that <throat> it's it's not a detriment like so for it's like so having a i don't know a minus Tirith block and then a rohan contingent to actually come in from behind oh. like that's that's the I, I can't really see a like a doubles list that isn't gonna like you need you need that to do well essentially because yeah. you can get screwed over way too easily if your opponent has that and you don't mm. yeah um, i think yeah so we played um we played some guys that had that sort of uh idea with boromir block of fountain court guard and then faramir and a bunch of cavalry but even that we were able to screen off just because of how terrain happened and with march so I think, yeah, we'll get onto this, but most importantly, both armies have to be able to function independently. Hmm. It's probably the primary tactic. I don't know if you disagree with that, probably. No, I agree. Like, I mean, it's four of, effectively four of the six scenarios, five, I think, sorry. Uh, your army's deployed apart or can be deployed apart. Yeah. Or can you think yeah. of any examples where they don't have to be able to fight independently? Because I think, yeah, Clash of Champions is the only one. Yeah, it's the only one you get to deploy together. <laughs> yeah. We'll come on to that. Yeah, as we 
as we go. But any any more comments about no escape? I think it's it's a fine scenario. Like you say, Clubby, it's sort of it's got the same sort of makeup of uh, to the death. But are we tier list in this scenario? I think this one probably goes in dog due to the deployment. Yeah. What, what, what's weird about, about doing a tier list? That's a <laughs> Mr. B. Sorry, Adam. Yeah, what's weird about deployment here is you can deploy them all over that six inches. It doesn't have to be together. Yes. Yeah. So mm. if you had an absolute horde, you could kind of block off the opponent and keep. So you had the Goblin Town. You could actually block it off in such a way if there's terrain in the middle as well. You can do some janky stuff. Yeah. I think like even the the victory conditions, it kind of it it wants you to take you can't really take a, a weak secondary leader. Nope. Um like the fact you just get two victory points if they die. Yeah. Um you can't just have one portion that is more elite and then the other portion is more spam and has a, a less than a hundred point hero that is gonna, you know, maybe run to a carriage test. Yeah. Like that's just not really an option. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that is going to do it for no escape. So moving on, we have total conquest. So this is a bit of an odd one. So essentially, you have the team A. So their primary um, force will deploy within six inches of the center of the board where there is an objective. Then team B will have their primary force. Uh, just to clarify for the listening viewers, it's six of a center, but not really because you've got a semicircle <laughs> so it's like the oh sorry yeah sorry so on your half of the board essentially yes yeah yeah um in a semicircle and then team b's primary force will go on the opposite side um and then after you're deployed you will do turn one movement and then at the end of your move it's maelstrom for your second force um mm. to roll to come onto the board and then there are four other objectives placed kind of like in a square um evenly around the rest of the board and um you can you can sum this up sorry Elliot, to interrupt it is sorry? it is domination domination yeah yeah it's Definitely. domination score and domination end condition with janky deployment mm. Yeah, the deployment's are really cozy because it's almost like contest, but twice the range, and your entire army has to fit in there. So that's four hundred oh, points. That's hard, right, for some armies. Yeah, it's very cozy, yeah, especially but... if there's good terrain as well, which there was at this tournament. So it enabled us <laughs> to actually fight in a bottleneck towards another bottleneck. So we had this our first game. It's really, really interesting game. I think this one is kind of another really important reason that each force has to fight on its own because mm. your primary force is in the middle and it's just pot luck whether or not the rest of your um, force comes on anywhere near and if it doesn't and your primary force can't fight on its own they can just you know annihilate that section of their army with your primary force um, it's an interesting one it's a mix of contest dom and all the maelstrom scenarios it's mm. i think the thing to remember when playing this if we're talking doubles tactics is the objectives are worth so many points go for them yeah. don't worry about oh we started close oh we need to fight because it's only one for wounding the leader and one for breaking whereas all the objectives are worth you know 80 percent of the points here I think I would have liked to have maybe seen, as it does seem there's been some element, uh, you know, put on where you've got the primary forces starting in the middle, maybe um, two VPs for killing the enemy leader or something. Like, because sort of when you're put there on top of each other, it seems like they want to kind of, you know, um, that fight is going to happen immediately sort of thing. Um, I think even more uh, psychologically, both the armies deploy on the center objective. And even in the back of your head, you think, oh, this center objective is really important. But it's no better it's than any of the other than... ones. Yeah. So uh, we just remember that if you're playing doubles, that the center objective is, again, only one of five. So not it's not as ground. important. But just because you're deploying there, it seems more important, you know? Mm. I think to a certain extent, to a certain extent, it is it can be more important from like a, because that from a positional point, because 
if you do, if you, someone does retreat off that objective, yeah, you're getting ground. You you're you're in the best place to then disperse either way, whether it's to their home to like the to the to the two that is on their side or the two back to yours. Like you kind of can dictate a little bit more where to go and what what is best. Like it's it's more challenging positionally for the person that does back away if they do choose to. Um, not to say that it's a, you know, it can be the right decision to do, but it um, you can maybe be on the t- a little bit of a back foot if you do choose to. Yeah, it just adds in the whole maelstrom, you know, jankiness yeah. as well. Would uh, you um, not it. touch upon that probably by just talking about time limits because uh, it was your event was two and a half hours for eight hundred points, which is quite a lot of time. Uh, is doubles traditionally uh, like a longer time limit because you sometimes can yeah. you know retreat and then play for a really longer more tactical game from my personal experience i do find that you take a bit longer playing doubles um in a single game you know up here what your game plan is and you do it in a doubles you might want to have a little sidebar we want to have a quick chat behind the hand tennis player style um we want to you know we want to confirm we're doing the right thing and sometimes when there's fights going on some people play it differently some people get oh i'll wait for my partner to do his fight sort of thing um i find doubles can take a bit longer so we just wanted that extra time yeah um just to make sure i mean to be honest you probably want two and a half hours 800 points maybe anyway if you uh if you wanted time to get all your games actually concluded but two hours to probably work and two hours 30 just added on that extra (laughs) bit of time yeah, yeah. I don't you think do... you had many games go over time. Like you know, you're waiting for people. Like no, that. no. Yeah, you still want it to pan out like a normal game, but obviously there's inherently going to be sort of probably more talking and things like that as there's four people at the table. So you know, extra time is good. But it um, also, on the flip side, then you've got two people moving. The way me and James played most of our games were James rolled for his section of the army, I rolled for my section of the army, and like the turns can go a bit quicker as well. So. It's, you know, yeah. There's simple ways. stuff going on in the game. It just flies through in certain turns. Yeah. yeah. I think it does for you guys, but we played some newer players right at the beginning. And new players obviously play slower because they're thinking really carefully about what they're doing. And when there's two of them and they've got to coordinate what they're doing, that takes even longer. So I actually think two and a half hours is a really good shout. And also, just playing three games the first day, then two the second was also quite clever, such that people can get home on the Sunday at a reasonable time. Yeah, people love that and the feedback. <laughs> Apart um, from the good v evil, Clubley has honed this event from previous years. It's as if he's done it before. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I don't care, but it was funny that we asked feedback last year and about three or four teams were like, we want to bring a good versus evil list. And we put that in the rules pack and none of those teams who came back did it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuckers. Um, uh, Adam, was the newer players just from a TO perspective? Sorry to interrupt the video. Was that that you played? Was that um, Will Champion and Jamie Wiggins? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those <laughs> noobs from Sensei. <laughs> the gauges. I think what was happening was, you know, when I went to get a drink, I think what I saw was Will asking Jamie Wiggins to get his wallet out and pay for something on Patreon. <laughs> well, do you reckon that's what Wiggins did? Paid for a doubles partner. <laughs> I think, uh, that's that's Will... the uh, premium package. That one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh you know, my god, he's going to start doing that now. You know that. Will was like the general at the back, and Jamie was this little pawn running around. Will was like, no, not don't move that one. That goblin one, king to the goblin, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie was just running around the board, moving all the models for Will. <laughs> Um, now, one other thing to sort of mention is that um, for the scenarios, so clubly, you weren't um, at the event, you weren't using all of the double scenarios. And it's one thing I actually noticed quite a lot in the doubles packs where there'll sort of be maybe three of the five will be the double scenarios and then the other two or however many games will be from the pools of the regular scenarios. Yeah, I mean, we'll get to it, but we, I believe it's, is it take and hold when we have a train piece in the middle? Um, uh, I can't remember from memory. Was it cornered? So oh, oh, yeah. I, uh, I think it's cornered. Yeah. yeah. So 
there should be a train piece in the center of board no more than six inches in diameter like from a TO perspective that's almost a nightmare to make sure every board has a train piece that's fair and the right size so we just scrub that one out yeah yeah okay yeah cool. um yeah and a mix of doubles and singles because they are we'll, we'll go through them all they're not they're they're fun they're different but some of them definitely need some tweaking i think yeah yeah okay well we will move on then to our next scenario which is the take and hold so uh this one here is sort of like divide and conquer essentially you've got an objective in the middle and um, the primary and secondary force from the two teams will split into the four corners, like how it is in divide and conquer. Um, so you get uh, three VPs, uh, three or five VPs, and then seven, if you have um, uh, more double and triple models um, within six inches of the center objective. Yeah, there's only the one objective. And it's, then... it's divide and conquer deployment and then hold ground VPs, essentially. But you get uh, is, a yeah. special resistant rule in the center, yeah. essentially. One or two for leader kill, one or three for break. Yeah, and then models within six inches of the um, objective gains uh, resistance to magic. That's all models and can re-roll all failed fake. You get slightly less freedom than uh, Divide and Conquer, though, because you've only got two drops, whereas you do more battles than the other one. But, yes. Yeah, well put, Mr. Gran. That's a lemon point right there. Thank you, man. <laughs> Making notes. Yeah, did we, we, we played this one, right? Or my... yeah. We did. We did. We, we played against um, Sean Creed and Dewey in this one. Oh, yes. Yes, I do now remember it. What a forgettable game, eh? That's why I can remember it. <laughs> <laughs> this one, uh, you effectively have to play the same as uh, Hold Ground and Divide and Conquer. You just get to the middle first and win by being in the middle. Once again, you need two lists that are functional because you're not going to be <laughs> in your line. Like you're not gonna have if all your spear sports are in one portion and, and all your front lines in another, it's tricky to to maneuver that. Um, because you imagine that your opponent is also double marching either side. Um, I would say you're bang on the the importance of march in mm. both your factions there. Mm. Or a drum. Yeah. yeah. Or a drum and a march. <laughs> yeah, then you're winning. Yeah, I think one thing, though, the sort of special rule with the resistance to magic and the rerolling fate, I'm not sure why it's there. I mean, I get that it's sort of an extra sort of quirky thing. I just I'm not sure it really fits the I because, mean, because Elliot, the area that both forces are fighting over <laughs> is an <laughs> ancient that... place of great power <laughs> that is said to be in <laughs> magic. magic. That's why. <laughs> That's me told. I mean, shit. As well said. You just got got, my my friend. <laughs> I it's think like, it's um, you know, normal whole ground doesn't have that. I sort of like, I just uh, but should it? Uh, maybe it should. Maybe so. I would assume. Maybe Vanquish just fucking go even more crazy in that scenario, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> cool. cool. I would. I think the suggestion is that doubles is slightly less competitive, so you want more fun rules, and they've kind of taken scenarios merged them together and thought, oh, I'm just not sure again. why that rule is like, I just, it's, it just seems like it's kind of plucked out of thin air sort of thing. I don't hate it because it actually, it's okay. Of, I, it, I, don't, I don't mind it either. It guides, <laughs> it does guide people to play the objective even more. <laughs> Maybe that's it. They're just like, like you get the objective of this scenario. So <laughs> like it just, yeah. it's just that little bit more of an incentive to, to actually that's fair. go to the I objective. Have, hands up. Who's forgotten about that while playing it? Like, Oh yeah, we totally didn't play it. Yeah, I don't think it would have mattered, Adam. No, no, there was if, one rule that mattered, if, and we didn't get it. If every scenario oh. had a special rule that affected something like that, then everyone would remember that they all have them. But it's the fact that it's just so out of the blue. It's yeah. nice. I I like it, but it's hard to remember. Yeah. Yeah. If James did a James did a Chad play um, where Faramir got knocked over. Take took two wounds and we were like, oh, don't worry, we've got re-rollable fate. Oh, yeah. Then James just oh. rolled two sixes first time. Didn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> was was we will caveat that this was game two. So, uh, sorry, day two. So James's luck had, in, 
had spiked up as opposed to day one where it was horrendous. What <laughs> dice did you use, James? Was it uh, Lee and Hobbit Hole? No, Atomic Cards. No, no, no. Didn't use them. Atomic I cards. wasn't using any like symbol dice. I the casino just, dice. Some standard like casino dice, yeah. Oh, Ashley's yeah. first dice. Did you see my brother had them, Ashley? I, he was, like, I he's got really small ones though. I didn't. The uh, the casino dice are actually all courtesy of James Goble. So all of my epic He stole wins. all my good ones. You gifted them to me. They were they were I gave them to Jack. That's yeah, true. true that. That's actually Is that uh, is that why you can eat only sixes, mate, with thirty four dice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get to we'll that. <laughs> we'll get there. Can't wait. Okay, so that is going to do it for Take and Hold. Moving on, we have Clash of Champions. Uh, so this is essentially Lords for Leaders. Contest of Champions, I think you meant to say. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> two people. Okay. There's a war in point. <laughs> yeah. Well, looking at the deployment, how it's, uh, you know, the 24, it's like Lords. Yeah, it's, it's like, just it's how deployment, be, really, isn't it? That... That some of everyone's feelings up is how contest of champions should be because you've got deployment how you like, but you can go right up to the center, which we love to see, and you don't have to rely like on the cursed, one the hero deployment bubble in contest. <laughs> but I it's don't more like interesting. Mm, I don't, otherwise, I don't people can get away with just having a terrible leader and like hiding them at the back of the map still and shoot. Yeah, so I don't. I, I, I don't like the, you have to use them. I like I like the three inch th- thingy. The little bubble, but if you could, if you made it, you know, whatever, choose a hero. I I I personally don't mind having the leader forced to be the thing. That's just I think the one change to a uh, contest that we need is that you don't have to do wounds to their with leader the with leader, your leader, yeah. and yeah. then you can draw at double. Um, <laughs> but back onto doubles. <laughs> um, <laughs> this one is actually quite cool. Uh, it's just completely different. Um, and you also get a nice, like a Legolas Gimli-esque rule mm. where uh, you get, oh God, I'll read it out. Friendly rivalry. Whilst the two allies, <laughs> whilst the two allies leaders are fighting alongside each other, they are both trying to prove that they are the better fighter of the two. Uh, you keep a record for how many kills each leader uh, has killed in combat individually, and then whichever of the two leaders has killed, has sorry, has the least kills, gets plus one to wound, <laughs> which is quite yeah, cool. I, I think it works exactly the same way as the Kirithongor Legendary Legion. So the Shagrat Gorbag thing, which always benefits that... Gorbag. Mm. They're re-rolled dice, aren't they? Oh, they're re-rolled. They're, yeah, they're re-rolled to wound. Oh, uh, re-rolled jewel. Jewel. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah either yeah. way, it really does <laughs> add this sort of game within a game, which I think we all enjoy. Oh, it's great. I've um going around games at, at doubles tournaments. I've seen, I've seen people like bicker when they've got priority. Like you do your leader slide first. Like no, you do yours first. I want plus one to win. Like no, no, <laughs> I, I want, and that's friendly rivalry right there. Like you love to see it. Mm. Yeah, and so it's also to say so the kills it's for. Um, the leader of the primary and secondary force. So it's essentially you've got two leaders that you're keeping track of yeah. the kills for. And then also for the VPs as well, you score two VPs for each enemy leader that has been killed in combat by another leader. So essentially you've got like a 2v2 kind of thing with the leaders to try and score those two VPs as well. The thing that is really interesting about this scenario is that being broken is so minuscule in the points. Or oh, Faden's come out of the blue there, death. Um, because you only get one VP for breaking the enemy army. So all of the points are in your leader and sorry, your primary force leader and your secondary force leader, even more so than in Contest of Champions in the thing. Mm. So like I think it slightly takes away from if you play a shooting list. It doesn't necessarily matter because even if you break, oh, you've only taken one VP, you know. Yeah, it's all about the leaders, right? All about the leaders. <clears throat> I think shooting lists are very, very rare in doubles, just because of the nature of the games. You often need, yeah, you need quite a strong leader. You need a march. You need a strike. Uh, at least one of each. I actually really like a defense as well because in this one, 
someone like Irilas or Gambling Without Banner, any of these sorts of guys, or Gambling With Banner, but you could just play, <laughs> just play 65 points to have your little mini Gambling going and just defense three times. Can be really helpful to stall and buy a bit of tempo. Adam, what if I told you that you could win a doubles event with Irilas and lots of bows? Woohoo! Sure, that's an angle, right? You could do that. Double defense. You could do that. <laughs> could totally do that. That's a tease. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's that's gonna do it for Clash Champions. So, moving on, we have Cornered. Now, this one. Oh, God. First. Is a bit sus. I have actually played it before. So what's do you just want to skip it, honestly. This is a shilling law tier scenario. If you're not it's a cool idea. If you're not watching this, I'm gonna I'm gonna see how Elliot described it, but it's gonna be difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. Right. It looks right. Right. It's just yeah. the RAF logo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, how do you so you've got like <laughs> so Team A's primary force goes within six inches of the center of the board, right? That much is clear. Yeah, and there's a terrain piece that has to be in the center of the board. Yes, and they have to go inside that. And well, then... it'll, well, it's very... What's the word? Um, there should be a terrain piece in the center of the board no more than six inches in diameter. So it, it could be a little, like an objective marker on that guidance. It could be a mm. as of signal tower. We don't know. <laughs> I think just touching upon the themey, themey aspect and less competitive sort of demeanor of doubles. This is meant to be like the primary force is defending in like a watchtower or a building yeah. uh, against the onslaught of an entire army while the secondary force comes to save them. Yeah. But in reality, you could just have a board with a tree. And then the primary force just <laughs> gets annihilated. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's played out the way it's meant to be played out, like I think, yeah. I think so I think it. just bear in mind while Elliot reads out this scenario that there should be a really good defensive piece of terrain in the middle of the board to kind of make it work. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, after the team A's primary force is within that terrain piece. Um, six inches from the centre of the board. Then you have Team B's primary and secondary force deployed within 12 inches of the centre of the board, but the primary force is within the next six inches after the first, and then the secondary force is within another six inches after that. Does it have to be primary first? No, there's, there's, a, there's a six-inch gap, like right? Yeah, you've got that wrong, mate. There's a six inch gap between. Oh, oh, that's after, a gap. Oh, sorry. I thought it was the, the primary and then the secondary. Yeah, after the primary team A is deployed, yeah. then you, you have a six inch gap. And then the primary and secondary, team, all of it can yeah. then deploy yeah. within the next band of six inches circumference around the, exactly. around the board. I think the best way to describe it for our visually impaired viewers is more than 12 from uh, 12, between 12 and 18 from the center. Yeah. Yes, in a circle. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. Is where the whole of Team B goes, and then um, Team A's secondary force deploys within three inches of the entire board edge, so they can go wherever they want. There's no roll or anything; they can just go wherever they want. Um, so the victory points for this one, so it's one and three for if um, the primary force of the team that starts in the middle of the board, so the team that's defending, uh, their leader um, is alive or hasn't suffered any wounds. Um, team B, so the one that's you know trying to basically gank um, the primary force that's in the middle of the board gets one and three for if they do wound or kill that enemy leader. Then it's one or three for break unbroken. Um, and then what's that two or four? Uh, if your team has more models within the central terrain piece than your opponent, if your team has twice as many, then you gain four. And then it's uh, banner VPs as well. It's worth pointing out at this point. I think there's three double scenarios at banner, so at two. It's a big I think percentage. It might be three. Yeah, I think it might be three. But, uh, it's, it's almost like we've got the scenarios here, isn't it? But, um, <laughs> but when we're talking building armies and doubles again, you've got to have a banner in. Um, well, Ashley and I last year took the Dragon Emperor. It's, it's pretty okay. whoop, whoop. escape banner. Uh, none for take and hold, none for us champions, one for this one. And is that it? I'm 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 speed reading here, but two out of six is still yeah. quite a lot, isn't it? Um, yeah. you're guaranteed to play. No, so from a TO's perspective, going back to this. <laughs> 
And this is why it's a difficult one to pick. On that train piece, if I put in the middle of a board, everyone who's been to Warhammer World will have seen the fields they put out on their boards. Mm -hmm. um, it's like four walls in a square. If you deployed inside that, that's almost an unbreakable fortress of barriers all the way around. But at the same time, Lashley says, if I put a tree in the middle of a board, you're going to get fucking crucified against it aren't you like <laughs> it's so hard for a to to make a train piece for every board that's going to be defensible but not too defensible and also you kind of you kind of want three out of the four walls so yeah. there's like a gap for fighting and three yeah. walls and to I, defend against i think but when then... i've i think when i played it that was literally how we did it we did it like a u so there was a way to get in but then the rest was kind of you know defensible but again, so can, that's I, just... can I throw shade at Dan Hawkins? If if you would like to. to. I would <laughs> like to. Thank you. Um, well, yes. <laughs> I let him write the rules pack the first year. And he had this or another scenario as like one of the ones we'd roll for. And he rolled this scenario on the, the morning of the doubles. And I was like, mate, you know, it's not really needs a train piece. He's like, and he goes to me, let's pretend we didn't roll for that. So Sam Grant, you're, vind <laughs> you're vindicated here. <laughs> on Tio's fixing results of uh, rolling scenarios. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? And you cru you crucified me for this club. You said, "Oh no, you're wrong," huh? and now you just admitted it that you've done live it live on the Gollum's Gamers right. podcast. Elliot will edit that out. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> will not. Um, yeah. No. Sorry, Ash. Carry on. I was... You were talking. Um... I can't remember what I was going to say, but shout out Dan Hawkins. Only oh, yeah. Dan's. Yeah. Only, Only Dan's. Dan's, yes. Only, Only Dan's, Dan's, indeed. Um, so, yeah, I do. I like this idea of the scenario. It's it's not one for a tournament. Obviously, it's in the match play guide, but I think they've tried to write these scenarios just to be sort of like, if you want to have a fun doubles game, these should be interesting scenarios, but they're not all meant to be competitively based. Like, I played this one just at a games night with a few mates and it was really fun. So, you know, and I think it achieves that. I think it is quite an interesting scenario, um, but probably not one for a tournament for the reasons that we explained. So moving on, we will go to Jewel of Wits. So this is another interesting one. So this is sort of Command the Battlefield-esque, uh, but it's not Maelstrom. So you just deploy in the quarters and you note down targets the same as you would in like fog or assassination uh and this one is banner vps as well so that's three of the six oh, that's very cool is is banner vps um but any thoughts on this one did you guys play this players may not discuss with their partner which hero <laughs> they've chosen oh yes the, oh yeah the, 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 the biggest <laughs> the biggest weakness in this scenario isn't it it's is a that... secret from all players except yeah. the player who you played this last year i uh remember when i was with ash yeah Secret in, in in for people not watching the video air, air quotes there of secret like yeah it's so hard to to stop even not cheating just like just talking to my teammate and going oh yeah wow theodem's a easy lead to kill isn't he am I being <laughs> am I being really really thick here guys but uh I've looked at it and thought what where it says it is secret from all players are they are they use the wrong except where. It is a secret from all players, except the player who wrote they it. They said down. accept. Yeah, that's a typo. Yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not it's, accept, yeah. yeah. <laughs> typo in the book. We need Jay Claire on the podcast to clear up this. Um... I read it and thought, wait, what? Oh, you right. accept the... Oh. How do you accept oh, that wasn't the player? Has, has Jay Claire ever been on a podcast? Be... They're not allowed. Not allowed. They're not allowed. Um, when this, uh, uh, but Rob has, uh, I've seen a Rob interview before, so. Yeah, I think you can ask the. They will have to be like was, approved and shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one was sort of not to do with. MSB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All I'm good. saying is, when this gets gets around the community, there will be an uproar for a republication of the match play guide to get that. <laughs> To correct that error. Well Sorry, done. Sorry, guys. Sam Grant, you've started in a... I just read it and thought, am I being really dense? The or doubles is community. that actually wrong? And I'm glad I wasn't thick. 
Um, and while they're at it, they might as well type up another three double scenarios. Yeah. <laughs> Normal yes. single scenarios would be great, please. Well, yeah. Edit me something. Please. Please. Um, is is there anything else that's kind of different about this one? It's um it's just unlike any scenario. I love this scenario. Any like, scenario you'll play in singles, which again is why you play doubles, right? To do a new thing, play a new scenario. Yep. It, yeah. It's great fun. It is really fun because you just don't know. Like if you're all doing it in the spirit of the game properly, you just don't know what is going on. You just <laughs> And then you start seeing one player who looks really smug because their partners accidentally killed the right hero. And it, it's just it's just comedy. I love it. it yeah. It, it depends if your partner's semi-competent or not. I'm going to fire shots <laughs> at everyone tonight. Luke Davies, the Guardian's team. We, <laughs> we teamed up at Articon doubles and he, he wanted to take his bears. He painted them lovely and wanted to use them. And... Um, Team A for an opponent put down their Fearden, Riders of Fearden, and they stupidly left the ability for me to transform my Bjorn into a bear, charge forward and hit Fearden turn one. And I was just, as I was deploying, I checked to him, I was like, guys, you realize if I turn to a bear, I can charge Fearden. They're like, okay. So I do that. And then they deploy their secondary force. Then Luke deploys his bears. At the end of the game, we get down to it. Fearden's dead. Finally got him. And uh, I go, yeah, I picked Fearden to kill. I turn to Luke and he goes, oh, I didn't pick Fearden. And I was like, well, <laughs> you, fight, you moron. Did he, did he pick to protect Brogit <laughs> by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> only, only I would ever do such a thing, actually. Mm. True. A good, good scenario. I think for people who have not played it before, take note. The first time you need for it can be a bit confusing. You need to try and get your heroes within 12 inches of the center of the board. That's what I was just about to say. Yeah, we didn't really mention about that at all. No, and it got me the first time I played it. I thought you had to keep your heroes away to get points, but you, you don't. No, you want to get your heroes. Rule. It means that you cannot just send them off to yeah. far away. You have yeah. to get them involved. I think that's brilliant. Well, that's a great rule. I agree yeah, with it. It's, it's, it's not a really good though, scenario, right? other than no, six. secret bit. Can't six inches, not 12. In six. Um... Yeah, it's the deployment yeah. was 12. Yeah. 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 They should have that other little six inch kind of bubble on there. I think that'd be. <laughs> Except no. uh, the viewers can't see that, but that was funny. <laughs> uh, you need to start a petition to try and, you know, make Zoom have the reactions work, right? That would really elevate the sort of. You know, watch that one. Uh, that one podcast uh, throwback when we were laughing about the reactions. Yeah. We were so excited for everyone to be able to see all the reactions, and there were probably was really upset that he couldn't see nothing. Them. No, you can't see any of them. I thought I was being a like a troglodyte, like oh, technology is <laughs> screwing me over again. <laughs> These kids and their emojis. You kids. Yeah. Um. So that is the last. Uh, double scenario so um any kind of final takeaways before we move in to look at some doubles lists no let's crack on with the with the list so, reviews okay. so moving on to the list um we have the articon third place list uh and the recent uh Articon doubles from last year uh, <laughs> it is a pits of doggle door list which um i was quite surprised to see come third at Articon uh in the doubles but there you go so uh the primary force or i'm not sure at Articon, do you know cobbly if it but you have to because was... this is a legendary legion so of course um, yeah, yes it's really well written for that because you know as obviously in the middle yeah do you no, know if they he... do have that rule though just out uh... Uh, he just does it as per the no, no, but as in where in your rules pack you've got it to say that the leader will always be the primary force. Do you know if oh, it's like that at Articon? In my rules pack, it's written in, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but do you know if it's like that at Articon? No, it's just, it's no, just no, no. They, they follow the doubles. They do yeah, it how it is that. Okay. So that really does sort of change. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a Pistol Ogador, um, led by Azog, of course, with three Hunter Orcs, six Gundabads with Shield, um, three with Spear, and three with Spear Shield. Um, then in the secondary force, they have uh, the Keeper of the Dungeons leading five Gundabads with Shield, five with Spear Shield, and one with Banner Spear Shield. 
Then they have a Hunter or Captain on Felwag leading, two Hunter Orcs, one with Bow, uh, three Gundabads with Shield, three with Spear Shield, and one Felwag. Uh, so it's 39 models, one Bow, and in 11 Might. Is it one Bow? I think it's just one on the Hunter Orc with... Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, one. Yeah. No. So what do you think? 39 models is pretty good. D does Keep it the go against our initial uh tactic of having each army be able to fight on its own already no. as of has march no it does yeah, yeah, march, march, which is really so both sides have march and really interestingly because I, I i love playing with pits really interestingly he's taken his first war band he's taken so many gundabads yeah he's gone really d6 I think he knows they're going to be fighting in the middle, so he's like, "Let's yeah. put the D6." Yeah, he's he's taken a lot of Gundabads in the secondary force as well. That's what I'm finding surprising. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, yeah, they obviously don't want to do a sort of wrap and you know kill. Uh, there's not many hunter orcs, orcs, is there? No, they just want to live and basically let Azog do work. Yeah, which yep. isn't isn't a bad place to be. Um, yep. I like the given, given the time for him to do his heroic combats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the hunter orc captain on the Felwag as well. Um, obviously taking them on foot is really really good but just having a mounted hero is just really really valuable um, and the Keeper of the Dungeons I just really love one of my top 5 favourite heroes in the game from the top 5 episode we did <laughs> um, but it's a good um, you like the Keeper of the Dungeons is also a good secondary leader for a lot of the scenarios like um, Clash of Champions I mean I guess he doesn't have any fate which and just totally die yeah he's a great but he's also though, yeah. He's also quite good at killing, um, but I guess if you're not thinking about maybe coming up against shooting armies, yeah, that much, then maybe you're not. So no, I, I take that back. He he isn't a good leader. I don't know how that. Well, no will, no fate. Yeah. I, I think he's no <laughs> will. He's really got overrated. three will with resistance to magic. I, I take that back. I take oh, it back. Three. Is he three, three I take out? it back. <laughs> yeah, he's three, which is and really resistance good. to magic as well. Page five. Is he two? He's two attacks. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. Strength five, burly compared to strength six. You can tell so the first time I ever played against this list was against shout out Paul Kelly, uh, who is a good friend of mine. And and him recently. <laughs> top lad. Um, I don't think he's a good friend of yours though, Elliot. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just it's hear from my kitchen? Piss. What what uh yeah, didn't you uh I'm not gonna get into that. Um Anyway, no, come against... on. This, this, this is the team, mate. Come on. <laughs> against Paul, he just sends his keeper into dungeons into two Moranans. Um, There's just a guy and a, a spear support, and you know what's going to happen, right? He rolls like a two high. He's got all three might. He thinks, nah, I'll just leave it. Two Moranans just roll fives. Dead. So I totally had that happen against Lee Robbins. First turn of combat. Shout out into Ooh. two Uruks. Yeah, so it's keeper, two attacks with a spear plus a banner, four dice, roll like a two high. I'm like, oh, okay. And then, yeah, double five. Oh, keeper's dead. Three might gone. Oh. Yeah. And he's 75 points. Uh, I would actually much prefer a Gundabad captain for 55. They are They're solid. so solid. Their strength They're five, solid. two attacks. Keeper's hella fun. Like right? four. Hella fun. Like, if you compare him up with Azog, it's hella yeah. fun. Yeah, really and also right. Courage Five is no joke with three will. I I actually think Keeper of the Dungeons is amazing as a secondary hero just for the bubble because this list will break. Yeah, I'd have liked another Felwag personally. I do like Felwags, but mm. you know, you're running together really anyway, and you know the double. I think the main the main selling point of this list is the fact it has double march right in both of the factions. And then it has Azog, Super Azog, with his priority. And and that, actually, that priority acts almost <laughs> as, you know, you can get both of your forces together. Is any all right? Sorry. It, both your forces can come together quite quickly, you know, without... You can use that auto priority to, to join your forces, split their forces. You've got a lot of control, so... Now, bear in mind, yeah. this is only at 700, and you've got 11 might, so you really don't feel that bad about using Spending some it. marches. And as well, gets the free hero combat What we love yeah. to see in doubles is they love to take bears, right? Yes. <laughs> it is so. But imagine the bear player deploys in the middle of in six. His other half 
fucking off the board. And you put Azog down, obviously, he's the priority. <laughs> <laughs> that bear player has got to deploy good or they're having a bad time. Mm. Even if they do deploy good, that's bye-bye five, four buildings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so that's going to do it for the Articon third place list. We're going to move into the Articon second place list, uh, which was Ugluck Scouts. Uh, so this came second at uh, Articon last year. So it is led by Ugluck, who's leading um, eight Scouts with Shield, Snagger, who is leading 11 Orcs with Spear Shield, and one with Banner and Spear. And then um, they have a Urukai Scout Captain. So that rounds off the primary force and then the secondary force, or well, um, as it's not primary and secondary, that's just one half. Uh, then you've got Malher leading the second half with four Marauders with Shield, um, eight with Bow, uh, and then Grishnak leading 12 Orcs with Spear, and then another Urukai Scout Captain with two-handed weapon. So that look is... What we, look what we see again here, like, <laughs> march of both halves. Yeah. Both, both maneuverable. Even if you leave the Orcs behind, you can shoot your Urukai off on their own 11 inches, like... So and it's you know, again you set your leader as Ugluck, so you know which force is always gonna have to be in. Of middle. course, for this it's that as well. Yeah. Um so it's 50 models, eight bows, and 15 might. 50 models at 700 points 700. is fantastic. Especially yeah, because your this army can target your opponent's one of their forces really easily Absolutely. because of yeah. how fast it is. I'm not surprised this this came um second at second. So Vince and I played these guys. These were the French uh, contingent. Very, very good players. Um, they, in the first game, it was the one where the leaders had to kill. And they played against some guy who had Sylodan and Witch King, I think. And these guys just shot into combat and just, just killed their own dudes. And then Ugluk and Malher are good enough to get some kills of their own. Yes, they're not the best heroes, but... They're good enough. They've got, you know, Mao has got three attacks. And, and yeah, they've got speed for days. We played them in Take and Hold, which is the whole ground variant. Um, and we had Riders of the Eden, And we, we tried to try and just gank one half. But these guys were pretty much as fast as us. We, we double marched. They marched drum. They're not far behind us. So they actually got to the middle. They won that move off. So they actually got into the middle just before us. So, yeah, this list does everything. I'm uh, surprised they managed to shoot out in the combats to win that. It's a, it's a good tactic, but they, they've only got eight bows. You say, it seems a bit lucky. Yeah. You meant to Don't talk about shooting people out of combat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, would you see more usually, I guess, in a, in a scout list? Well, yeah, I mean, list. When, yeah, when I run scouts, I max out. It's one of the few tricks they've got. And if you max out scout bows, you've got another tool in your arsenal. But it, they came second. They built a list to play doubles and did well. Yeah. yeah. For a doubles list, it does have a lot of bows. Yeah. I mean, like they paid five points for the 200 weapon on the captain. Maybe just drop that. I don't know. But yeah, they wanted to get to the 50 moral mark. So, you know, for the break point, I think it's a good place to be. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Any more comments on this one before we move on? No, cool. Uh, now, I don't have the article first place list. The only reason is that it was the Dragon Emperor. And I thought, seeing as it's been changed, there might not be too much stock to put into that. So I skipped it. Uh, but we <laughs> are going to... Uh, just, we'll give a little teaser. We'll be uh, commenting on the FAQ in the next episode. So stay tuned. Maybe said that at the I forgot about that. Yes. But uh, yeah, we'll be talking about it. Uh, so we are going to move into uh, talking about Clubley's event, so uh, the Defence of the North. Now, I found it quite funny when I was looking at the lists earlier today, Clubley. So uh, Bjornings came second and third last year and this year. No, they didn't. Either uh, either didn't. way around. So as in, as in, so there was a bear list. Where did bears come yeah. this year? Was it second or third? Yeah, oh, yeah they, they came uh, third this year. They, they came, they came second. second last year, so two <laughs> years in a row. It was the same team as well, which is probably the more... Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, Bjorning's at 800 points. Now, Lonely Knight was being really annoying and it wasn't letting me split up the bows and the things, but it's Bjorn leading seven uh, Bjornings and then three with bow uh, and then the same all van for Grimbjorn. So it's 22 models, uh, six bows and six might. We had seven Bjorn enlists the first year. 
out of what was that? That was like the teams. Wasn't <laughs> that often... that was quite a, the sort of height of the bear hype, I think, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, after Sam Grattan uh, came second at Contest and projected <laughs> bears into the ether, uh, and they became like the most popular faction, they peaked at uh, Master Club Lee's Defense of the Law, and then when never I think seen that them, was where they just it died. Dropped <laughs> off a mountain. It was after that. Yeah. Because Please check out that terrible podcast, um, the Swindon one, something about atomic. Cards or something. <laughs> oh talk God. about Longshanks data, and you just see the awnings, and then there's just a spike <laughs> in February, like uh, March last year, and then back down again. Back down again. But um, yeah, uh, bears and doubles, Sam. You know why people the floor take is, it? the floor is yours. <laughs> like probably speak, probably gone. Yeah, I mean, I think the reason why people take bears, it's just a very simple list to do. Don't need many models, don't need to paint much. It, it is fun for you and your teammate. Maybe <laughs> not so fun for the people you're playing against who have the, to deal with the bears. Um, but I can see why it's super popular and it fits in nicely with points. Yeah, I think it's more the ease of... It's, yeah, bear, 10 guys. Yeah. Like, you're both the six-inch banners, so they are functional on their own. They... Admittedly, the bears do want to be together because they are way better when they're like together. Um, but they can survive and they can just not die if you roll sixes. That's you know that's it. Um, they, can, they can get there super quick together, right? Because yeah, transform a bear, then throw it eight inches forward, then hit her at combat, and next thing you know, the two bears are together. Yeah, it's like you move at like eleven inches or whatever with the with touching the rim of the base on the the man and then moving eight and whatever. Um, yeah. The bear move. Yeah, it's just a bit. I I do think that's some like the Bjornings can be left behind, and if you have a list that can really chew through the Bjornings as fast as possible, the on how many other scenarios that you split up in, that it can be pretty bad. Like I I actually I still think I personally think bears are better in singles than they are doubles, just because you're together more than more often than not. Um, but. Yeah, it's they don't have march, they but they can the bears can be mobile, and they're strong, you know. And it's, I think it also helps that because you're because most people that are trying to take a you know the com most competitive list, they're taking two portions of the army that are, are work on their own. They're not going to have a big leader, so it's harder to kill the bears in general when it comes to doubles because you don't have people are less inclined to take a hero that can go to toe to toe with it so taking a faramir you know you know you're not going to risk faramir and to be on a grim are you so yes ashley uh i'd like to uh agree with sam um at 700 points and 800 points of doubles uh you're highly highly unlikely to be able to deal with a bear and in most of the double scenarios the primary forces deploy very close to each other. And with only having 350 points or 400 points, it's impossible to deal with Bjorn and 10 Bjornings. That's, I think, why they're so good. Um, was was it this event last year where you two had the infamous row at Ash's house about bears? Uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> just, it was just uh, oh no, oh, I thought you meant like when we were I'm on about the one at Ash's house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This Emperor. was the bear route. Oh, it, it, was, it, it carried this, over to the tournament, though. Yeah. We had... Okay, mm. let's, 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 let's lay out the discussion here because it's going to be so exciting. My position was that uh, the Bjornings are probably the most terrible playing experience to face oh, it was in about a playing experience. of SPG. Okay. Yeah. And then Sam, I think, rebutted by saying which King Sally or Dragon Emperor was way worse. Dragon and Emperor. Just, yeah. But it was it was a it's because one of you was playing the Dragon Emperor list and one of you was playing the Bears and you were going to be playing the next day. And you went home, you had a few lemonades and it got heated. <laughs> and you carried over to the next day in the tournament. And it was amazing to watch. <laughs> Honestly, thought you and Sam weren't gonna be friends anymore. Death of the podcast. The thing is, that's um 
That's just classic. That's quite commonplace for me and Sam. We once... <laughs> I can't remember the topic, but we once argued over like the punctuation of a sentence for a good two hours on the walk to some party. And we were just, we can argue was, on anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nervous moment in time. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty hard. Um, yeah, Bears, they're just so killy. You, when you play them, you have to play the objective. Kind of, but basically what me and James did. When, when we go for our games in a second, I don't know where it's gone. Probably to um, be cool, but yeah, when we when you play bears, you want to play the scenarios um, and avoid the bears, and utilize the fact that they've only got six mic points against them because eventually they'll run out of might, and then you dictate the game. But yeah, nice. me and James also had a heated debate on how to play yeah. bears, and James was correct, and I was wrong. <laughs> so we'll get onto that. It was funny to watch, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's going to do it for the Bears. Um, so moving on, we have, again, a list that came... So it was third this year, but came second last year? or, or uh, right. Set, um, Second this year, third last. Different third players last year. this year, though. So I just found that quite funny that two years in a row, the same two armies were both in second and third. Well, but, funnily enough, the same player as well. So Nat... Um, sing no Dan Garside had it last year with um David Brown and they came third. And this year, Dan Garside is of Nat Sinclair, and they were playing this list in the final round mirror match to uh see who took second place. Yeah, um, so this list was slightly different to the one from last year, though. I just chose this one, uh, so <clears throat> it's Angmar 800 points and keen eye viewers may notice that the lonely night it was a viewer of ours i can't remember his name but he actually sent in a amended version of the lonely night builder to show the might will and fate after all the the hounding from my uh you know fellow hosts here um it's Elliot, about been amended. 10 seconds ago you said oh lonely night's being annoying it wouldn't let me put the violins <laughs> in the right place <laughs> but now we are making improvements. So it is the Witch King on uh, Horse with Crown of Morgul, 3, 15, 3 leading, 7 Orcs with Shield, 5 with Spear, uh, 1 with Banner Spear, and 1 Dead Marsh Spectre. And then they have a Barrow White leading, 7 with Shield, and 5 with Spear. So that's the first force. And then the second force is led by uh, Gulivar leading, 5 Orcs with Shield, 4 with Spear, 1 with Bow and Spear, um, and 1 Dead Marsh Spectre. And then another Warband um, led by a um, Orc Captain with shield, not on Wag, leading four orcs with shield, four with spear, one with bone spear again, and two wild riders with shield. So that is 52 models, two bows, which is a bit unusual, Frank Mar, uh, and eight mites, which is pretty usual at 800 points. Solid. Yeah, really solid. I am um, a humble flex here, but Daniel Hawkins and myself, my life partner. And doubles partner. Um, we have taken a very similar list, 900 before, where we had only difference. We had a captain of Barra in each ball band and a few more orcs, but Angmar, I think, is another list that works very well at doubles. You can't pick the leader, but sometimes it's Gulliver in the middle, sometimes it's the Witch King. Um, sure, obviously, in this, thing tournament, you do. Yeah. in this tournament, they could pick, but that's even better. Yeah. Um, and when we talk about getting together quickly in the middle, you can see their secondary force has that march. And Gulliver can fly. You can spec to summon forward. Hurrah combat, slingshot him, and you're you're amongst the pigeons. Um, yeah, it's a, right then. it's a very good list for doubles. And Fifty-two well. models as well. At Eight hundred is just really really good place to be. Like I would yeah. like the Warg on the captain, but you'd go down to fifty models. I mean, fifty-two is just really 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 strong. Yeah. Uh, Angmar expert Sam. How different is this from what you would take for singles at 800 points? It doesn't look that different, to be fair. Uh, I don't like the spears, no shields. I oh, yeah, so you do usually run... Uh, I swear you sometimes run like... I've like... run, if if points-wise, like I'd, I'd try to put a shield on every single spearman. Like Sometimes, say if you want to get... Uh, it's like my 700-point list, I've got 44 models, and like six of them don't have shields in the barrel white's warband but i'd always try and find a way to 
I think but, I'm thinking of when we used to play against, or um, I used to play against your AOL a fair bit, and you'd run Musgers Warband with Orc Spears with no shield. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> but it's I, think, that, yeah. I don't know. Like, another difference between singles and doubles, right? To highlight because in doubles, a lot of the scenarios you probably aren't going to be shot at due to the deployment. In singles, Sam, um, you need those shields because Angmar can get pin cushioned in a lot of scenarios. In yeah. Singles. Definitely. And they're also less valuable because uh, the Witch King, Gulliver, and the Barrowite are going to be, because Gulliver's got such quick movement, you're basically going to have 600 points versus their 400 points mm. while you march over with the rest of the Orcs. Yeah. So, great point. Less important to have shields because you're already attacking their force much quicker than you would be in singles. Yeah, and you're um, outweighing them sort of thing with the points. You're outweighing them. And I think that's why this list does so well at doubles is because where you're separated a lot of the time, um, Gulliver's so quick that you've got massive magic support and, an, you know, yeah. the terror to just annihilate a 400-point I mean, yeah, like the 600 to 400 point sort of relationship there. Like, you know, I'm not sure what primary force leader is really going to be able to survive being outnumbered on points against Witch King Gulliver for very long before their secondary force. And you can't, exactly. Support. So, yeah. the, the the way you would um, yeah, you, you want to play this in one of the single scenarios, really. <laughs> so you can be together and that, yeah. that's, why it's so, that's why it's so successful. Yeah. Um, can we see any weaknesses? Or is it just the, the regular Angmar weaknesses? Yeah. I, I would have had a uh, again, I I basically would have had a walk on the the captain. Um, yeah, like would you have gone down to fifty models to fit? I don't think you need fifty two models. So, like, yeah, yeah, because the one makes you a lot. You, why, yeah, no. you can fly Gulliver in, and you can march him in, and then you've got another yeah points in the middle. Um, also, really good counter to bears because if you can paralyze or um transfix the bear and then hit it with Gulliver, you're laughing. Bye bye bear. Yeah, then you're playing 600 versus 200 points, and that's <laughs> yeah. just not even a game at that point. Yeah. So Unless I mean, they roll like Goebbels. Sad, James. Um, God, we, seems... we teased that moment so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it seems, you know, looking at these last two lists, if you and a friend are looking to, you know, go to a doubles event and you want to do quite well and you have Angmar or Bears, those would be pretty good options based on the last two years of Cobbley's event. Um, any more comments before we move on? No? Okay. We are going to go to the New winning matter. list from the Defensive <laughs> Board. Oh. 2024, yours truly, James uh, and Ashley Warger. Now, um, on our Instagram, uh, you can see a photo of these two with their trophies, um, which was part there. Um, but, oh, you have them tanned. Yeah, nice. Love it. Um a mighty large cock ring you have there, Ash. <laughs> I am girthy. That's a girthy fuck. So, uh, you would like to take us through the host, Elliot. Do you want us to run through our tournament, or is that another slide, or should we just do this now with the list? And then, no, have, yeah, just now. So, can just run through the list. Why don't you run through each of you individually your okay. own force? Let's do it that That's way. That's fun. Fun. So, I had the primary force, uh, with Faramir. Shout out to Faramir. Uh, on a horse with lance, heavy armor, and a shield. Uh, I had three warriors of Minister with a shield, one warrior of Minister with a shield and spear, one warrior of Minister with a banner, one knight of Minister with a shield, four rangers of Gondor with spear, and two guards of the Fountain Court with shield. I then had everyone's favorite um, captain, Madril of Athelion, uh, six warriors of Minister with a shield, two warriors of Minister with shield spear, and four rangers of Gondor with spear. Oh, Over to my partner. James wow, James. thanks for that lovely handoff, partner. <laughs> so I was Buddy. using the secondary force, and it was led by Here in the Tall, Warden of the Keys, with horse. <laughs> he was leading three warriors with shield, one with a banner, spear, two knights of Minas Tirith with shield, four rangers of Gondor with spear, and two guard of the Fountain Court. Then backing up this beautiful warband was my boy Iralas, captain of the guard. That was the team of the tournament. Now this guy, this Chad, guy, this Chad guy. Chad's model right here. He was in six warriors with shield, 
two with spear and shield and four more rangers. And that is another 52 model list with 17 bows and 12 might. So I think, James, uh, we can demonstrate to the viewers that this list is effectively identical in each path. Uh, yep. Both forces have 26 models. Both forces have a banner. Both forces have a fight five striking hero and then a uh, marching hero. Yeah. Um, we have effectively and a defensing hero. Yes. Mm. <laughs> uh, Much. What do you think? Uh, go on, James. Give us some. Give us some points. Give us some points. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of. A spammy minus tier list, but it works perfectly for doubles because you can just split it so nicely. I think I we've There's got so much to it. A punch with uh the punch with the two heroes. Two mounted is heroes. Still pretty good. Wound, yeah. And especially on your force, because you've got Iralas, uh who's got the fight five, got the march, got the defense. Yeah, the fight five is definitely very important. Incredibly chad. So <laughs> it made me laugh because I remember that <laughs> after the first day, I came over to Ashton. <laughs> I'm like, oh, how are you guys getting on? And I remember James going, I am so fucking bored. This is actually <laughs> the most boring list. It's because I'd taken, obviously, to the GP, Faramir and Madril. So I was like, yeah. I literally went to Ash before the tournament. I'm going to use the other half because otherwise we're going to be so bored. Yeah, James <laughs> goes, I'm oh, fucked. This so bad. literally like it just has guys. It's it has at the end of the, just, the first day. Me and Ash were both bored. going. Oh, I wish we hadn't taken this list. Yeah, you were going. I'm so bored. I, I was just James. <laughs> James's face was so drained of all. That was because my dreadful dice like combined with it. It just and was I a think, horrible combination. I thought, oh god, you've got to you've got to have a certain play style for this to be exciting. Like it's very. Uh, line combat tactical esque, um, yeah. but you don't have any tricks. You don't have any get out of jail free cards with a point seven Boromir. You've got lots of dudes, and you have to position them properly. And I think as we'll go through our long chance record in a second, you have to play the scenarios immediately to win this game with this list. Um, so you want to give us a little rundown of yeah, sort absolutely. of on briefly. Yeah. So our first game was uh, Total Conquest against shout out to Aaron Wright and Mark Newham, which Ooh. we won five four. Uh, James, do you want to go through that game quickly? Uh, yeah. So obviously, Ash Primary Force deployed in the centre. They had Azog's Hunters and Azog's Legion. The Hunters were their primary force, so they were facing off against Faramir. Uh, we won priority. Ash simply just backed away from them so we could group up as like a team so we've got Madrim on the board plus one for the maelstrom section i simply come on behind ash to support him we've got a big line and we're thinking we can just shoot for as long as we want they've got hunter orcs their d4 and then push up claim the objectives they then decided to interestingly bring on a large troll behind us they had a troll there's a couple bats and a oh, from, bunch oh. of berserkers which was there in i think that i oh, know and they yeah. also had a mercenary warband but that took a few turns to come on due to their own spending of will and might, which perhaps maybe shouldn't have done. But <laughs> yeah, we just kind of splattered the troll then slowly walked forward, calling combats, claiming the two objectives close to us and having more in the center as well for that objective and just basically eking out a win. That so... game was, me and James spoke about it to start with, and it was like, my 400 point uh, primary force is going to really struggle against um, Aaron's hunters, which was Yasneg, Fimble, Nazog, and like, I don't know how many how many guys you can get at it, like 24-ish? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they were going to charge in, strike, annihilate our front line. So winning that priority, they then didn't counter, and we were, kind of, we were like, okay, we've got Magil, we can Wait. join together our forces quite quickly, let's move backwards. Um, and after that happened, our game plan went sort of as planned. We just yeah. shot for a bit, I mean, and then moved to the objectives, and Eat out of victory. Yeah, at the end, unfortunately, I whiffed a couple of heroic combats, which would have given us a bigger margin of victory. But it, yeah, and this was uh, uh, as you'll find conquest. out, our margin of victory wasn't very important. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, total conquest, the, uh, the domination, domination one with the maelstrom. Domination with maelstrom. Well, yeah. Cool. Um, we then moved on to game two, uh, and we played 
uh, Robert Gray and Nathan Florence, shout out. And we played Retrieval. They had uh, Pools of Thranduil and Iron Hills. And we eked out a nil-nil draw. <laughs> excellent we really passion. did only just scrape a nil nil draw we well. <laughs> we thought we were going to lose this game um and effectively retrieval ended in a draw who'd have thought uh we sat and shot each other for ages they had like four or five elf bows like alas four or five crossbows but we had 17 bows with madrill with the d7 in the front so we were like we're happy taking this shooting war yeah. we won the shooting war um, this was a highlight of James's well. bad luck. Quick <laughs> question: How, how many yes. did James kill with? Here we go. Oh, so, well, having taken sixty shots, I think I hit fifty-five of those shots. Though, it's pretty... killed zero models. <laughs> James killed zero models, baby. <laughs> um, well, luckily, I... Ash's dice, the GBHL hundred dice, Ooh. the GBHL hundred dice, uh, were going incredibly nervous, and oh. we managed to kill all six of. Um, I don't say who had which force. Uh, we managed to kill all six of the uh, Iron Hills crossbows, won the shooting war. So they thought, okay, we don't want to fight because we're losing the shooting war. Let's run away. But for banter, we'll chuck Dane and Legolas into their whole army. We thought, uh-oh. We were so close to breaking. Um, eventually, they ran out of might. And then the, 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 the whiff came. Dane whiffed. James had 30 <laughs> dice to roll 34. on Dane. 34 dice to roll on Dane, all needing sixes. What happened, James? Well, we start off with Magil, straight sixes. Oh, you know Magil's going to do the work. No sixes. Then Ash hands me this conglomeration of 30 dice and goes, James, I believe in you. I simply just... We, we actually cleared terrain out of the centre of the you table the so I can roll them you beautifully. The... And I went <laughs> to him. We just everyone's scouring the table. There's a singular six <laughs> out of thirty dice. What are the? Uh, but uh, you know, I what did the get the four to wound. Let's so, go. That's what, what matters. The... How many sixes should you get on thirty dice? Anyone? Five. 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 So James... Thirty-four dice. Sorry, you had the four from Nadro. Oh yeah, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. so a bit more. This was the level of handicap uh, that James Goble plays with at every event. So <laughs> can we have a? Can we have a moment? Uh, and if you respect James, put an F in the comments. Uh, we yeah. eked out a draw because eventually we managed to stop Dane and Legolas. We killed Legolas, but then we stopped yeah, Dane. We um, they were, I believe, two off breaking us. They were two off breaking us. I think actually we were one. We, I think we were one well. off breaking them, but all their models were hidden in their house at the back of the board, which was an impenetrable yeah. fortness. Fort Heading into game three, uh, me and James had a total victory point score of one in the positive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we then played a minister of um, not mirror match, but kind of mirror match in take and hold, which is the divide and conquer hold ground combination. Um, and we played the team Geo. Uh, shout out to Sam Butler. Um, unfortunately, your teammate isn't on there. So unless, James, you remember his name. Totally don't. I think it might have been Mark, but I don't know. Uh, they had um, Boromir with like 14 Guard of the Fountain Court bolt thrower. Then they had Faramir, like 13 knights, bolt thrower, uh, Beragon. Yeah. And effectively in that game... We double marched, me and James, boom, boom. And we were able to screen off the knights from Boromir's force, which was very good for us because obviously our range is to fight four and all the knights only fight three without Boromir's Well, banner. there were quite a lot of Citadel guard on horses as well. Yes, uh, but... Obviously, they're much easier to kill, so it's fine. Exactly. Um, I don't know if that's going to show up on the... On the recording, Sam. But Sam has beautifully <laughs> scribed out F for James. Thank you, Sam. Mark, smiley face. I'm not sure it will. Maybe it will. Welcome. F, uh, F for fortress. <laughs> F for fortness. In, F for <laughs> uh, in the end, um, the bolt throwers sat on their objectives, didn't probably earn their points back. Uh, no, I mean, they instantly met... killed my banner and a couple guys, but. True. That true, was true. literally, I think that, that's about all they did the whole game. It so. was the fact that they had. They had substantially less models than us. So yeah. 
having six of their models on the bolt throwers allowed us to have a lot more models in the middle. Um, effectively, the game ended. They hadn't wounded Faramir, thanks to James's legendary double six. Uh, we hadn't wounded Boromir, but we had like 19 models in the middle to their 17 um, yeah. and just eked out a victory that way. We were both broken. Um, yeah, I, I broke them with the last fight, I'm pretty sure. I was one one singular Mirastiff warrior fighting a crew on the bolt thrower who just rolled a six. They also sad. rolled a six, went to a roll off, won it, and then rolled a six to kill so it. That it was, was a legendary uh, moment. <laughs> James's dice have been horrendous all day. Yeah. They spiked for that last combat. And it was only upwards from there, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, wait until I, day two. I can't wait to hear the next two games then. Come on. So um, we won that one 4-2, uh, bringing our margin of victories up after three games to three VPs. Let's go. <laughs> That's hard. Uh, moving into day four, we played... Day four. Uh, day four. <laughs> day four <laughs> That's a long game as an event. <laughs> I don't want to choose between Fortness and Day 4 for anything. How am I meant to do that? <laughs> comment, below, ladies and gentlemen, if, comment below if you would attend the Golems Game, a four-day event uh, that we're going to run in the future. I think all of the Golems Gamers would be there, but that would be it. I would, um, I would attend any Golems Gamer tournament. <laughs> That's oh, lovely. Lemon <laughs> guest right there. Um, so Sounds we played... Captured uh, day four. <laughs> on Day 2, <laughs> Round 4... We played Andy Hamblin and Charlie Francis with their scary Bjorn. Too hot to bear. Too hot to bear. Uh, this is your turn, James. Run through this My game. Turn. Uh, what was the scenario again? Capture and control? Capture and control. Yeah. So they basically, there was a little house in the middle of this board, a uh, couple of forests on either side, which actually weren't great for us because obviously their entire army has woodland creature. But they put the bears separately on the side of the house, which is quite a bonus for us because we knew we're not going to get charged this first turn, even with the additional like, bear move. So it allowed us to take, I think, one or two turns of shooting, but we killed like four or five Bjornings from it, which was actually really nice. And this is where the slight quabble came up between me and Ash. Like, what, sh what should we do now? They're like in our face. And Ash, do you want to say what happened? So um, if we move back three inches, we would have gotten another turn of shooting but being behind our back objective uh, and i said james we've just killed five from shooting this is great if we move back again we'll kill more bjornings we'll outnumber them so much and james was like no we need to stay on our objective take the combats uh but just be in a better position to counter and move forward we argued and argued and argued and in the end i went listen james you he, he james went i've never lost a bjornings and i said okay We'll take your advice, mate. <laughs> and then in the first turn of combat, the Bjornings killed 13 of our guys. <laughs> and I was furious. I was like, James, this is all wrong. This is all wrong. But then you saw the light. What happened next, James? Yeah. Well, using Madl Madlil? Madril <laughs> is best, best rule, woodland creature. He flew through the forest along with Firemir. He flew to our bitches. <laughs> yeah. Do you not know you had that special rule? Yeah, Madril Flark. And we broke through the lines to attack their defending Bjornings. I thought you had your Faramir mounted. Yeah, yeah, he didn't go through the forest, just Madril. Oh, sorry. That's lovely. We didn't <laughs> cheat. Yeah. No, I, was ready to take, I was ready to take away your trophy then and you'll give yourself one. <laughs> oh, no, so effectively, oh. Cubby, there, was a, there was a Bjorning like next to the forest. So Madril went through the forest to charge him and Faramir charged outside of the forest. Yeah, and then basically set us up for next turn to just annihilate the back Bjornings and just slowly spread out and take all the objectives. Because at this point, I'd also pushed here and around the other side. The bears have kind of been baited in the centre and we just encircled the entire army. And basically, luckily, Kieran didn't whiff at all, so he just kind of walked through Bjornings. Faramir wasn't quite as successful. Like, I think it was four turns fighting a single Bjorning and taking a couple wounds, but... He luckily, um, they left the archer Bjornings on the back objective. So when Faramir was losing the combats because they're straight for Heath D7, they weren't wounding him. Uh, and we need to shout out Iralas because what did Iralas do against Bjorn for at least Iralas Bjorn 1v1? First turn, a defense, he actually won that combat. <laughs> Uh, but did no wounds. At this point, Iralas literally had no fate, just a singular wound, so it was just kind of hope. 
and then for three turns just shielded into Bjorn's face and simply just rolled a six and he didn't and just laughed. He didn't even need his heroic defence. No, so uh, that basically saved us from losing the middle objective because Bjorn was stuck there uh, fighting Irolast. Even at one point, um, we thought Irolast might win the combats and shield Bjorn <laughs> off the objective. Um, but I think a really huge turning point in this game was the fact that they only have six might. We have 12. So by the late game where it matters, because obviously in capturing control, you're turning the objectives last turn. We were able to dictate when we moved, when we wanted to go in order to kill the stuff we needed to. Um, and after a lovely game against those two guys, we were able to win 7-5. Uh, and we moved on to round five uh, in second place. We were playing the first place gamers, which are shout out Sean Creed and Dewey Evans, the Guardians. The uh, Guardians. <laughs> and why aren't you wearing your, uh, you know, Guardians top, Clubly? I thought you. I don't allow me to, to join the working. Guardians gamers. He is. <laughs> so we could. Oh, 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 the big reveal. <laughs> the Alley King. Can you actually take your uh, t-shirt off, unlike Ali? <laughs> yes, I can. I had to help him out of that jacket, didn't I? Yeah, you can help yourself out. So, um, Elliot, you should clip that and put it on the Instagram from the what bit? Well, Ali trying to take off his t shirt. <laughs> oh, I have the video. Well, no, uh, I'm gonna put it in the pod when Ali comes on because we still haven't talked about Ali and the big reveal. So, That's true. I... Uh, he, he is gonna be coming on the Preston preview though next week. I did, by the way, have a list of people I want to shoot shots at and I've ticked them all off apart from Ali and now's a good a time to any to just say oh. Ali King is what the French call les incompetents <laughs> that is me done thank you <laughs> love that uh, so we played Dewey Evans and Sean <laughs> Creed game 5 <laughs> uh, and it was at the scenario which we talked about first no escape and Luckily for us, unfortunately for them, uh, they won Burity, so they were deploying their primary force first. Now, they had the uh, not overpowered combination of Pastor, Braga, Alfred, Captain, with like six million models because they're so cheap. The not uh, overpowered combination, just to... And, and then they had uh, on Dewey's secondary force, <clears throat> um, Thorin's company dwarfs. So it was Bilbo... Dwalin, Killy, Feely, Nori. Bomber. Nori Dory. Those are the two. Yeah, there, was, there was no Bomber, yeah. Jesus Christ. Sorry, I can't remember all the, the which ones they had. Um, but they were all on ponies as well. Get yeah. your Feely were, and your Keelys, right? Come on, mate. They definitely had... Which one did they have? Feely. They had Feely, Killy, Nori, Dory, Dwalin, Bilbo. Buffer, buffer, bomber. There we go. Boom. So uh, they were very nicely modelled as well on, on ponies by Dewey. Um, so James, I'll let you go through this one. Oh, really? <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, they I I don't know. I feel like this was slightly misplayed by the booster. Um, they could have instantly marched into us, and because we're not going to fight against six heroes that are going to splat us in a scenario where you have to keep your models alive. So they I don't know. They should probably should have won this game. But right, let's get into it. <laughs> we simply this right here this is our models this is them bang we sandwich our army together thread the heroes through the line to keep them alive obviously here and in this scenario is the goat because he saves us like seven vps or something if he simply just stays alive so that was the whole game plan just hide our heroes behind everything use the line to sandwich through them they're only d4 slowly chomp through and that's basically exactly what happened they did get slightly unfortunate with the dwarves rolling like pretty poorly on some of the combats i think a couple of them got one shotted in the first turn they totally did but that me. is because they did trap themselves so yep they're at fault uh simply just using the master you know bannering everything but my side just kind of rolled through it ash got a few kills <laughs> we broke them and then at this point we were like shit we're broken, we're broken. We just got we got a run away. We've got a banner. They don't have a banner. That's how we're winning this game. 
because we had two, then he had none. Bang. <laughs> so what did we do, Ash? So this, this we go bright idea. We go, James, James, we just run away now. We win this game. And he goes, oh, my goodness. That's the best thing you've ever said. So we win priority and we just run away with Faramir, Turin and the banner because those are 10 of the 12 VPs or whatever. Um, however, for another ring was made. No, um, they were actually able to catch the banner last turn. And we were like, oh, no, this is so bad. But I failed a courage test with a few guys. And then I called a heroic move. And where we finished, Faramir and Huron kept one single Ranger of Gondor outside of six inches of the heroic move. But he passed his courage test. And he couldn't get within the six inch bubble. So he was still on the board. He had stood still. And Dewey and Sean, same as me and James, thought, oh, we'll just leave those that, that ranger there because he can't do anything. So let's not charge him. Anything? To their error. Uh, they left the master with a clear shot from this ranger. And James just is, you know, doing classic James things, looking around the board um, and spots this glorious shot. And I mean, James, what happens then? Just simply went five hit, bang, five wound, bang. Poor Mr. Creed goes, oh, I'm going to fail both my fate. And we just win the game. With that one <laughs> single wound. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because in the end, they did catch the banner and kill it. Uh, so it would have been a draw if it wasn't for that lemon ranger uh, that James yeah. shot and wounded with. So uh, after that, we won that game 4-3 uh, to make us an undefeated doubles partner, taking first place. Um, and we had a margin of victory after six games of six VPs. Five games. <laughs> Sorry, five games. It does. It does kind of hurt me that you guys won this event because obviously Ash, I was your partner last year, and <laughs> you know, I get subbed out, and you guys win the event. So <laughs> we did come fourth. We're still, yeah. we almost we're, podiumed. We almost podiumed, but we're still waiting. So that's the, that's for... the difference. You had me this year. I mean, I can't really dispute that. I mean, that is literally <laughs> the difference. So, <laughs> you know. we we'll state, um, Elliot, if if you. Your only podium, because James has won an 80 when it was only 80s and 100s. If, you know, you had podiumed at a 90, not on your own, as your only podium, we want we want to, all the glory to be on you, you know, that Instagram post yeah. of you with the trophy Can't take all it on your own. Me. That's going to be hard, mate. That's what we're waiting for. So, Thank Elliot, you. who are you going to team up with next year, mate? Um, that is a good question. I will probably need to lean on my Golems Gamers brethren uh, to carry me to a... I have podiumed at doubles before. It was an 80 But We were thinking um, next year we'll we'll bring out a new member of the Golems Gamers. Shout out yeah. Sam Tiller to the uh, <laughs> doubles event. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, if he ever sees this, shout out to that man. We'll take you to the doubles next year. Um... Over to Sam and Adam to talk through their tournament. <clears throat> We're definitely not going to run through the all six games. <laughs> I want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> where did Where did you guys finish though? Where did you finish? Oh, yeah, like eleventh. Eleventh. Well, just give us your top three highlights from the event. Then you went three and two, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Two. So we took um, half Rohan, half Minas Tirith. I took Boromir, uh, flag horse Irilas. 12 dudes, seven of them were Guard of the Fountain Court, five of them were Warriors of Sirith's Shield and Spear. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's a list that does does what it does quite well. If it's together, if it's not together. Oh, sorry, the Rohan bit. Um, it's three heroes. So we've got Theodred, who's the leader, who normally wouldn't be great as a leader, but because of Clubley's rules, we can actually choose him not to be the leader and Boromir, which is great. Welcome. Yeah. So we, we took advantage of that. And then Dernhelm, that 75 point of absolute killing machine. Um, and then gambling without banner. So 65 points of March and defense. So both sides have March, defense, strike, which I think is really, really, really important. The Rohan had like 15 warriors on foot with axe and shield and a couple of raw guard and a couple of outriders. So yeah, it was <clears throat> decent numbers, not 
huge. I think there's like 36 numbers in the end. 36 models. Yeah, yeah 36. Yeah. Uh, it's a really good list. Vince and I had run it twice before, uh, won two events with it. Um, but yeah, it kind of got unstuck in two of the games. Um, actually gone. Uh, I think Sam disagrees that it's a good list. Because <laughs> that's what he told me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, <clears throat> I see why your list probably is better. Uh, just because you've got more numbers, you've got higher defense everywhere, you've got double banner, just in case you're separate. But, um, but yeah, I think in general, you've got three heroes who can really go ham. You've got a really quite strong battle line. Yes, they're D5 with the Rohan, but you've got the 12 minutes Tirith guys as well, Irilas as well. So, yeah, it's pretty good if you can get them together, and that's what the march is for. That's the problem, getting them together. Well, yeah, we lost <laughs> we lost one game because because uh, there was a move off against Dewey and uh, Sean Creed meant that they could divide us and they met up in the middle. That would have been interesting if that had gone the other way. Um, did they divide you and conquer you? Wow. That is what they did. Yeah, I just realised there's totally a penis on the screen. <laughs> If, if the viewers, this is the most chaotic screen I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you, you drew the cock on the screen. I was <laughs> So really the viewers, the class, I think, yeah. are just seeing a completely, you know, normal slide. But for us, uh, it looks like sort of a bunch of three-year-olds with, you know, uh, felt-tip pens have kind of, you know, gone nuts. On. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that will probably close it out there um so. <laughs> <laughs> Dan didn't even get should... to talk about his doubles experience that should, that should that should probably do it we spent a long time talking about the event um so well, hang on I, I you did promise me i do get to shout out the event you do you my guy that's <laughs> <I'll do. I'll laughs> the only reason i came in mate <laughs> um yep um yeah well this year we had 30 teams 60 players defense of the north bristol and bristol um a train inspector improve approved train yeah, um, very we knew key. a lot of people wanted to come that didn't come, and oh dear. I know your dozen fans will probably now want to come listen to this podcast. So we're gonna try and squeeze in more um tables next year for more people in the other hall. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for early 2025 for a great and if, tournament. If you want to see the Golems gamers in person after hey. we'll be there next year. Me and James have to be together next year to re do. retain our title. Uh, so, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Um, until next year. Yeah. But, um, probably, Comment thank below you very much. What you guys would use if you were playing doubles. <laughs> like Moral Bears. And make sure, guys, to comment below what's your highest bowling score you've ever achieved. That's, that's, a, good on that's a good point. That's a good point. That's what fucking matters, all right? Fuck the, fuck the doubles. <laughs> Wait until you see Sam next to his leaderboard score on the Instagram. That's gonna play. Do a game. Golems gamers, uh, uh, you know, uh, bowling, uh, you know, Saturday night next year. Even more tappable if the fans want to come bowling. That's, with what, I'm us. That's what I'm saying. After the bowling. defense of the North double. Let us know. If you've let ever us know. Gone. Let us know if you've ever gone to Turkey because that'll be typical. <laughs> you got quite <laughs> tappable. <laughs> 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 The bowling. Uh, right, let's end it there. Clubly, thank you very much for coming on, my friend. Uh, you were an excellent guest this evening. Thank you for uh, giving us your time. Clubly is is the top TO, and I'd recommend he go to his events. And when you play him, you'll have a great time. You will. Yes, much love. Yeah, uh, right. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching another episode of the Golden Gamers podcast. Bye.